Welcome back guys. Today we are going to be going over 20 things that I do not waste my money on. Now plenty of items could make this list, but I think these are some good high level topics to touch on that a lot of you might be wasting your money on and might not even realize it. Number one, kids clothing. Have you ever actually taken a look at brand new named brand kids clothing compared to adult clothing prices? Oftentimes the adult clothing can be found on sale. However, the kids clothing cannot for some reason. So instead, I don't buy brand new kids clothing from name brand stores. I will go to Walmart, pick things up there, garage sales, resale shops, try to get hand-me-downs from family members. Kids go through these clothes so quickly, they grow so fast, that it simply doesn't make sense to buy them brand new things on a regular basis. Number two, full-priced adult clothing. So if I go into an Old Navy as an example, they usually have a very substantial discount clearance rack. I always start right there. And if I can't find what I want, I wait for a sale and buy my clothing on sale. But most of the shirts, including one of the ones I wear right now, I usually pay somewhere between five and $10 per shirt because of sales that I'm able to find. So I never buy name brand or full price clothing. Number three, eating out. If you go eat out every meal of the day, or more importantly, let's say you go into an office job and at lunch every single day, you go out with your coworkers. Then on weekends, you go out with your family. That can add up very quickly. Instead, I do go out occasionally and I will go out on the weekends with my family. However, weekdays, we bring our lunch to work or the kids bring their lunch to school. And then we cook dinner every night of the week. That allows us to save money and eat healthier because we're not eating anything fried or filled with butter or any of the unhealthy stuff you would normally find at a fast food restaurant. Number four, drinking out. Alcohol is very expensive and it is usually something that a lot of companies will rely on in order to really increase the price of your bill. As an example, let's say you go to the grocery store to buy a case of beer. Those may be somewhere in the vicinity of $1 per beer. If you were to go anywhere out to eat, that would probably be five or more dollars for the exact same thing. So if I am interested in having a drink, I will have one before I go out, if I'm going out to a restaurant, in order to save potentially four or more dollars on the cost of that drink. Number five, expensive cars. Years ago when I was younger, there was a massive difference between the high-end and the low-end cars. The low-end cars were mostly lemons. You may have to take them back in every other year. As an example, when Kia and Hyundai first came out, they were kind of like that. They were very low-end cars. Nobody really wanted them, but they were really cheap. So you may buy it, you may have a lot of problems with it, but it might suffice. Whereas if you were to go buy a Toyota or an Acura or a Honda, something like that, those were very high quality cars. Well, those years are behind us. Now, even the worst cars are light years beyond what they used to be. So there's no reason to go buy the expensive luxury vehicles. Instead, you can find a more moderately priced but fully featured vehicle that will make you happy for years to come. Number six, bottled water. As you can see right here, I have a water bottle and I will put a link in the description below because I very much feel like this is one of my favorite water bottles that I've ever had. It is insulated and I can fill it up, carry it around with me. The water will stay cold all day long, assuming it lasts that long, which it typically doesn't because when I have water with me all the time, I stay hydrated. I drink a lot more water having this with me. However, if you're going and buying bottled water on a regular basis, not only are you wasting money because you're not able to fill out of the tap, which is just pennies per bottle, you are also creating a lot of waste Recyclable materials, yes, but they're still waste. They have to be recycled. They have to be thrown away. So I don't waste my money on bottled water. In that same vein of bottled water, number seven is individually packaged things. Typically when you buy something in bulk, you get a much better deal and you don't have nearly as much packaging to deal with later. So if you were, for example, to buy a large bag of chips, that you could open up, you could take out what you need for a given meal, close it back up, put a clip on it, put it away. 
If you were to buy the individually packaged chips, they could cost you 50% more. They would create more waste that you would have to either throw away or recycle. And overall, continuing that beyond just chips would waste a substantial amount of money in your budget. Number eight, disposable products. If you are using a reusable plate, glass, water bottle, anything like that, you are not generating any waste. You can use those items for years to come. If you instead use a plastic solo cup or a paper plate or plastic utensils, every single time you use those, they have to be thrown in the trash. They fill landfills. If you throw them in the fire, for example, while camping, you're going to end up with some really ugly looking black fumes coming off of that fire that you probably don't want to be breathing. So I try to avoid disposable products, both for the waste they create and the cost that they add up to. Number nine is vending machines. This goes hand in hand with individually wrapped products. However, if you're buying a multi-pack of individually wrapped products from the grocery store, you can usually find a reasonable deal on it. But if you buy each of those individually from a vending machine, they can be marked up by several dollars. Something that might cost you 25 cents in a multi-pack at a grocery store may instead cost you $2 in a vending machine. So I avoid vending machines at all costs. Number 10, name brand anything. I personally don't care about brands. The extent of my interest in name brand products is purely that of reliability and quality. But I found many times the reliability and quality of those name brand products is not all it's cracked up to be. A lot of the time I can find a better deal on a very similar product buy that and be just as happy with it. Or I have sometimes bought what I consider to be name brand, as an example, Craftsman, which just recently got bought by Lowe's, and they lowered the quality. So it's a name that I recognize, it's one that I trust, but not as much anymore. It has gone downhill a bit. Number 11, full priced anything. I am always looking for a deal, a sale, a discount rack, anything I can do to save money in every aspect of my life. Now, I don't let this run my life. I don't say I can't buy that because it's full price and unless it's on sale, absolutely not. If I need something, I will pay for it. However, as a default, I'm always looking for an alternative. I will always start at the sale rack or the clearance rack. I will always look for those deals prior to going to buy the full priced item. Number 12, any of the latest fads my kids are into. These things can change almost daily, but definitely weekly. I can't tell you how often my kids have either seen something on TV and they desperately needed it. It was the greatest thing they'd ever seen. Or they found something that their friends had at school and it was so popular they wanted to be one of the cool kids. And yet the very next week, nobody cared about it. What would have been the point in wasting my money on those items? Number 13, cable. Like many people, we had cable for years and years, but eventually we found that the quality of the programming was just subpar. They started repeating the same shows over and over again for months at a time. And I got to the point where I was thinking, why am I paying $60 a month for this? It's not that great. Whereas the streaming services that are out there are very good. You can choose what you wanna watch, when you wanna watch it, and they are much cheaper. You can also mix and match which of these you want. So maybe you do a Netflix for $15 a month and a Disney for $5 a month and a Hulu for $5 a month and combined you're spending $25 a month for a wide variety of programming, but not $60 a month for cable, which you're not interested in. 14, a home phone. Now I'm not sure how many of you still have these, but I kept a home phone for years. I had lived in various places where cell coverage just wasn't that good. And if you had an emergency, I wanted to be able to pick up a phone and call 911 or call someone just in case. But now cell phone coverage is very good. I don't really have to worry about that anymore. Also, faxes have kind of gone by the wayside. They are not very common anymore because you can email things. So a home phone is something I have eliminated from my budget. Number 15, a gym membership. I have not paid for a gym in over 10 years. Instead, what I do is I bought some free weights that I use at home, some mats that can go on the floor to protect it, a series of workout bands that I can use, and a small unit that will allow me to do pull-ups and dips. 
All of these things probably just cost me a few hundred dollars, but I have gotten 10 years worth of use out of this. I've learned to work out without requiring machines at a gym. It has made me healthier, more consistent in my workouts, and saved me thousands. Number 16, impulse buys. How often have you been walking down the aisle and said, oh, hey, I need that. That's great. Or I didn't know I needed this until I saw it. That is so common for me, where I will suddenly need something just because I saw it. And I have to ask myself, did you need that yesterday? Will your life really be different if you don't have that tomorrow or if you do have that tomorrow? So I avoid impulse buys as often as possible and I never buy anything at the checkout counter at the grocery store. Number 17, food delivery. I was actually a pizza delivery driver when I was younger, and I understand how tipping works for those types of jobs. But if you think about how companies are structuring the pay for the workers these days, companies are now charging a delivery fee, and it could be something like $3 for having your pizza delivered. That's quite a bit, considering that is before you give a tip, and they make it explicitly clear that that is not a tip. Typically what that's paying for is a fee that the company is going to pay to the driver to pay for their gas to get to you. Something like that. But those fees really start to add up. So if at all possible, if I want to not go somewhere to eat, I'll place an order and go pick it up. Number 18, shipping. Now I know free shipping is fairly common these days, and this has seemed to come and go over the years. But if you have an Amazon Prime membership, you probably never pay for shipping on any of those things. At Walmart, if you order $35 or more worth of items, you don't pay for shipping on those. But did you know that most companies offer something like this? It's not necessarily a pay us a fee and we will give you free shipping for the year, but most companies have a minimum purchase that will be eligible for free shipping. So whenever I'm looking to order something, I try to figure out several things that I need all at once, try to find a company that offers all of those products, and place one larger order so that it all gets shipped free. Number 19, extended warranties. Now these are just never a good deal. Ignoring the fact that most extended warranty companies will try to cheat you and not give you the warranty that you paid for, typically, if you were to add up the cost of replacing the goods that failed, versus the cost of buying extended warranties on all the goods you buy, the cost of just replacing the ones that failed would be less. Number 20 is high cost mutual funds. Now I obviously have a high level of interest in retirement. My last several videos have been about that. And you can put your money for retirement in many different places. But one place I do not use is high cost mutual funds. Effectively what those are is they are managed funds where somebody is going and buying and selling stocks on a regular basis on your behalf. Instead, go for index funds that are low cost, like an S&P 500 index fund or a total stock market index fund. Anything that has a very low, like a 0.1, 0.2% cost margin, that is going to save you so much money over any of these high cost mutual funds. That is everything I have for you today. I hope everyone enjoyed the list of 20. Please leave your comments below. If you like this video, please like or subscribe. And please click the bell icon below if you want to get notified whenever I post more videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.